Hi guys, it's Elaine here, the Animal Reiki Lady. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you happen to be in the world. Thanks for joining in. It's time for another reading. And this reading is for another Milo. Uh, I had three Milos in a row and I actually got them a little confused um, because when I, I'll tell you a little bit about this in a second, but when I go into my meditation and then I start my automatic writing, I invite Milo to join me. Well, I had three different Milos um, three requests from three different Milos. And, um, and yeah, so this is, I think this is the third one. <laughs> All right. Hang on a second here. All right. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Elaine. I'm an animal Reiki master and I help people make deep spiritual healing connections with the animals in their life. That includes animals here and animals on the other side of the veil. And that is one of the topics that Milo brought up for today is what it means to be on the other side of the veil. Uh, okay, so here's what we do. Um, also, if you're catching this for the first time, I share information that I receive from animals. Uh, my practice of Reiki is based in meditation and an unintended or unexpected consequence is that I am able to connect on a really deep personal level myself with animals. And they share all kinds of information with me, not just pets that live in our home, but animals from all kinds. I work with zoos, I work with sanctuaries, rescues, and wildlife. And the messages that they share with me are beautiful and peaceful and lovely. And there's so much they want me to share with you. And Milo in particular today has a very... Um, pretty profound, deep message to share. Okay, so for Milo, the first thing I like to do whenever possible, I like to share something personal to help the human companion of the animal who's doing the reading uh, understand and, and validate that this is their, their pet. So um, the couple of things that came through for Milo, and sometimes they share and sometimes they don't. Um, and it's just interesting the way this works, but this is what I got from Milo. Um, <laughs> Milo is smart, quite brilliant, actually. So that was the first thing that came through. The second thing that came through was uh, I, I get, I asked for like little, I don't need like whole blocks of thought. Um, that does come as we talk about the more profound messages. But I just asked for little snippets, pieces of information. So I got something about soft eggs, um, scrambled eggs, soft eggs, not sure where that was coming from. Um, a kitchen pot holder. So I got the chance, I got the uh, distinct impression that Milo um, would steal potholders off the counter. So if you're not in the U.S., well, potholders, right, to, to grab something hot off the stove, I got, a, I got the impression that he would steal those and, um, and love to play with them. Um, and then we got a little bit deeper. He, uh, Milo was giving me a sense of blame, not from him. There is no blame on the other side. Uh, what I got a sense was that he wants the whole family to heal, that there is some kind of group blame going on. Um, between each other, everybody blames everybody else for something a little bit different about the way that Milo passed. And he does not want any blame whatsoever. Um, and the how of animals crossing, I get this message all the time. Um, they make it very clear that how they cross does not matter. Um, and that we should just let that go. We just need to let that go. Dogs in particular live a much shorter, obviously, life than, our, than most humans, and then usually they're human companions. And there's a reason for this. I try to get to the bottom of that, and I know that it has something to do with our own growth and our own learning, and they come to us for a very specific reason, and they spend a short period of time here. One of the messages that um, Milo gave me was that dogs in particular shoulder a big responsibility. They come here and they know, they know that their time is shorter than ours. And oftentimes they stay, um, they stay sometimes in pain. And this is not meant, again, it's not meant to, for blame or guilt. It's just the opposite. It is the reason that we <clears throat> blame ourselves and that we, that we linger in such guilt, wallow in the guilt. Um, our dogs will sometimes stay for us because they sense our need. They sense that we need to, that we need them to still be here, but we shouldn't get again, tied up in that. They, um, 
Sometimes they wait for a sign from us. I know that, that we often say, I'm just waiting for a sign. I'm waiting for my dog to let me know that it is time that he wants, he or she wants help. Um, but oftentimes it's our dogs who are waiting for the sign from us. They're waiting for us to say, we are ready. And, um, and they will stay until they feel that we are ready, that we are ready for them to cross. Hang on a second. Um, excuse me while I take a little drink, frog in my throat. So that was one of the deeper messages that Milo was sharing with me today. And then a couple other things. Milo says um, that when animals cross, they become super souls. That was the, that was how it came through, a super soul. When he crossed, he became a super soul. And as super souls, they have the ability to do anything. And I share this with you guys. I don't care how far down the rabbit hole you think it is. When our animals step into their soul self on the other side, they can do anything they choose and they can connect with us. They try to connect with us. They always connect with us. Whether or not we can hear, see, or feel it, that's, that's up to us. Part of these messages are meant to help you open up to the possibility that your animal is there waiting for you to give them the permission to give them the green light that says, come on in. Uh, I did a little video earlier this week uh, about Otto and how Otto let his papa know, you can come back, we, we can connect anytime you want. Anytime you want, I'm here for you. There is no need to, to think about, am I here or am I, um, where am I? Or will I ever see you again? Because the answer is yes. And that can happen instantaneously if you let it. So they become super souls. The other thing that Milo shared with me is that there is there is no veil. I used this analogy. I said this a couple times already. On the other side of the veil, Milo says there is no veil. The veil, if there is such a thing, is only in our minds. It's something that we create and we can let it go. And right now, even as our society has started to shift somewhat, there's been a lot of awakening going on, even though I don't, I don't like to use that word, as, but that's what the only word I've got at the moment. There is a lot of awakening going on and the veil is getting thinner. So more and more people, as they are allowing themselves the possibility of connecting with their animal companion that has left its physical body, isn't that an interesting way to phrase it? Um, that that veil becomes thinner and that there really is no veil. We can just let that whole thing go. And I have done so with my my Jack, my Lucy, Jake. Uh, I fostered seniors for the longest time. I had three senior dogs that spent their entire lives with me, um, but, in, but they were all the same age. So when they all crossed, it was all within a year that, um, that my three seniors crossed. And it was Lucy who showed me that she didn't go anywhere. I felt her when she crossed I felt her pass through me and I knew that she was all around me. And it was, that was a, a beautiful way for her. She's the one who prompted me to start doing all this. Okay. So I got a little off track. So they're super souls. There is no veil. Oh, this was a really, really cool message from Milo. I can't wait for mama, for Milo's mama to hear this because this is a message for everybody that the reason why so many animals are coming through now, because that was my question. <laughs> I had three Milos and you know, I, I mentioned earlier that on some days I feel like I've got a room full of animals clamoring for my attention, wanting to get a message through. And here is why Milo explained it to me, why they're all coming through right now and why so many of them come through. And it is because there is a quickening of the love. Um, that's what he called it, a quickening of the love that they want to come through more and more because if they can speed things up a little bit and just start to fill everybody with a sense of love instead of sadness and grief and guilt, um, they want to they want to accelerate, it quicken. They just want to quicken it. They want to make it happen faster. And so there's a quickening of the love, and that's why all the animals are coming through and why there's so many of them. They want us to let go of all of those emotions that are keeping us separate all of those emotions that make us feel alone. Yeah, we need to let it go. And that's part of their big responsibility, but they're loving. They don't shirk that responsibility at all. They are here for us and they are here to help us and teach us and guide us and love us. 
And yeah, that's the magic message that I got from Milo today. So for Milo's mama, what a special doggy. Um, he, he really had a beautiful message for us. Okay, so that's our message for today. I will be continuing with readings. And go, so go ahead, keep on coming, guys. Drop me an email, put a comment in below. If you would like your pet to have a reading, um, I have one on my list that is a painted turtle um, named Dove. And um, I, I'm going to be sitting quietly with Dove. And I know that there is a special message to come through from Dove as well. So um, otherwise, let me know if you would like a reading. I'll be happy to do it. And that's it for today. So wherever you are in the world, have a beautiful, amazing, wonderful morning, afternoon, or evening. And until the next time, may the animals light our way. Take care.